The Lives of the Saints, by the Reverend Alvin Butler, taken from the fourth edition, published in 1954. July 3rd, St. Phocas, Gardener and Martyr. St. Phocas dwelt near the gate of Sinope, a city of Pontus, and lived by cultivating a garden, which yielded him a handsome substance, and wherewith plentifully to relieve the indigent. In his humble profession he imitated the virtue of the most holy anchorets, and seemed in part restored to the happy condition of our first parents in Eden. In what a field for contemplation does a garden offer to our view in every part, raising our souls to God in raptures of love and praise, stimulating us to fervor by the fruitfulness with which it repays our labor and multiplies the seed it receives, and exciting us to tears of compunction for our insensibility to God by the barrenness with which it is changed into a frightful desert unless subdued by assiduous toil. Our saint, joining prayer with his labor, found in his garden itself an instructive book and an inexhausted fund of holy meditation. His house was open to all strangers and travelers who had no lodging in the place, and after having for many years most liberally bestowed the fruit of his labor on the poor, he was found worthy also to give his life for Christ. Through his profession was obscure, he was well known over the whole country by the reputation of his charity and virtue. When a cruel persecution, probably that of Diocletian in 303, was suddenly raised in the church, Phocas was immediately impeached as a Christian, and such was the notoriety of his pretended crime that the formality of a trial was superseded by the persecutors, and executioners were dispatched with an order to kill him on the spot, wherever they should find him. Arriving near Sinope, they would not enter the town, but stopping at his house without knowing it, at his kind invitation, they took up their lodging with him. Being charmed with his courteous entertainment, they had super, at supper disclosed to him the errand upon which they were sent, and desired him to inform them where this focus could be not most easily met with. The servant of God, without the least surprise, told them he was well acquainted with the man, and would give them certain intelligence of him next morning. After they were retired to bed, he dug a grave, prepared everything for his burial, and spent the night in disposing his soul for his last hour. When it was day, he went to his guests and told them focus was found and in their power whenever they pleased to apprehend him. Glad at this news, they inquired where he was. He is here, present, said the martyr. I myself am the man. Struck at his undaunted resolution, and at the composure of his mind, they stood a considerable time, as if they had been motionless, nor could they at first think of imbruing their hands in the blood of a person in whom they discovered so heroic a virtue, and by whom they had been so courteously entertained. He indirectly encouraged them, saying that as for himself, he looked upon such a death as the greatest of favors and his highest advantage. At length, recovering themselves from their purpose, they struck off his head. The Christians of the city, after peace was restored to the church, built a stately church which bore his name and was famous over all the east. In it were deposited the sacred relics, though some portions of them were dispersed in other churches. St. Asterius, Bishop of Amasea, about the year 400, pronounced the panegyric of this martyr on his festival in a church probably near Amasea, which possessed a small part of his remains. In this discourse he says that Phocas, from the time of his death, was become a pillar and support of the churches on earth. He draws all men to his house. The highways are filled with persons resorting from every country to his place of prayer. The magnificent church which, at Sinope, is possessed of his body, is the comfort and ease of the afflicted, the health of the sick the magazine plentifully supplying the wants of the poor. If in any other place, as in this, some small portion of his relics be found, it also becomes admirable and most desired by all Christians. He adds that the head of St. Phocas was kept in his beautiful church in Rome, and says, The Romans honor him by the concourse of the whole people, in the same manner they do Peter and Paul. He bears testimony that the sailors in Exune, Aegean, and Adriatic seas, and in the ocean, sing hymns in his honor, and that the martyr has often succored and preserved them, and that the portion of gain which they in every voyage set apart for the poor is called Phocas's part. He mentions that a certain king of barbarians had sent his royal diadem set with jewels and his rich helmet a present to the church of St. Phocas, praying the martyr to offer it to the Lord in thanksgiving for the kingdom which his divine majesty had bestowed upon him. St. Chrysostom received a portion of the relics of St. Phocas, not at Antioch, as Baronius thought, and as Fronte de Luc, in the Bailet doubt, but at Constantinople, as Montfaucon demonstrates. On that solemn occasion, the city kept a great festival two days, and St. Chrysostom preached two sermons, only one of which is extant. In this he says that the emperors left their palaces to reverence these relics, and strove to share with the rest in the blessings which they procure men. 
The Emperor Phocas built afterwards another great church at Constantinople in honor of this martyr, and caused a considerable part of his relics to be translated thither. The Greeks often style St. Phocas hero martyr, or sacred martyr, which epithet they sometimes give to eminent martyrs who are not bishops, as Renard demonstrates against Baronius.